righty, it's 908, and when politicians in trouble, we turn to our main man, yeah. political analyst John Taney. <laughs> and look how sharp he looks this morning, hey, wearing we the bow yes, tie. Can we, can we get oh, close we on get... this this morning? Let's make, well, we'll see it. There you go. Look at that. Doesn't that look great? Doesn't that look great? He's got, the, sharp. he's got the bolt on. He's got the, the long the, you have That's a true tie. Charger fan. You have to have the fever. Every, everybody's got the fever this weekend. Definitely. So this Chris Christie thing, you know, the thing about it is, is he really didn't need to do this. He had like a 28-point lead. His office didn't need to do this. Why did they go down this road? Well, he, the word that he used, which I agree was stupid. It was a stupid mistake. Uh, you're absolutely right. They didn't need to do this. They wouldn't need to do this anyway. I mean, this is just bad government. This is what bothers me, is that the young people who are dis disillusioned about politics anyway, they see this and they think that's the way it is. Let me tell you, most of the elected officials I know would not have, have, have allowed this. Now, he's come out. He's mm. apologized. He keeps saying he's very sad about the situation. He had a two-hour news conference, answered all the reporters' questions. Where do we go from here? Does his apology, is that enough? Uh, I think it is. I think he's looking okay, to use that term, for this reason. What, of course, the biggest scandal in this country was Watergate. We've got so many terms out of that. If there's not a smoking gun, if it doesn't, turn, if it doesn't uh, reveal that he knew about it, or what I think he has to be afraid of is some of these aides that he's fired, if they come and say, no, he did know about it, then he's in trouble. If none of that happens, which I don't see is going to happen so far, I think he's going to survive this and still be a viable candidate a for president. A lot of critics saying it's hard to believe that he did not know about this. Uh, you'd be surprised. Again, speaking as a former aide, speaking as a former chief spec, speaking as somebody who's been involved on the outside, not personally, but in scandals. I've had a couple elected officials who've, uh, you know, been, been involved that, that I've had to handle crisis management. It is not, uh, I can believe that this one aide started doing this email, perhaps talked to a couple aides and said, hey, let's do this. Uh, you'd be surprised that how much it's done by staff. But we're not talking about painting the sidewalk. We're, sh we're talking about shutting down the busiest bridge in this country on 9-11 week, not just for one day, for four days. You don't think that, I mean, it's hard to imagine that an aide could do that. A I'll, deputy aide could do that. I'll rephrase it. If the governor did know and if the governor did sanction it, I would find it hard to believe that it's not going to come out because he wouldn't have just said it to one aide. Civil aides would be, no, I'd use the example of our recent Filner uh, mm. uh, debacle, that it came out later that a lot of people in the office knew what was going around, but they didn't know how to bring it out and handle it. It's never, nothing's going to be in a vacuum. So, like I said, the smoking gun, if that comes out, he's dead. If it doesn't, I think he survives. The other interesting thing to note is on Tuesday, his chief of staff, Kevin O'Dowd, is going up for the attorney general spot in New Jersey. It sounds to me, and what I've read is, that that appointment is not going to be swift, and all the, um, the folks, the legislature in New Jersey, they're not saying that that's going to happen anytime soon, because there's so many questions now as to whether Mr. O'Dowd was involved in this. That's a big deal to watch for this week, isn't it? Absolutely. It's a huge deal. And then you had his other former aide who recently just gave the fifth on every question, you know, with his testimony. So absolutely. And again, Jeff, you bring up a great point, because keep in mind, we're talking about, I hate to talk pure politics, but we're talking about a Republican governor in a blue state. So yeah, these uh, the Democrats that are in charge of the legislature, they're going to make sure that they bring out every point. Not necessarily milk this, but they bring out every point um, that, that they need to. And real quickly, you mentioned Bob Filner, so we are approaching the election coming up. We're a month away from the election. Where do you see the candidates right now? Oh, it's, it's neck and neck, and, and I predict that it, on election day, it's going to be very close. Keep in mind, and you've heard me say this before on this station, the old uh, paradigm used to be what they call get out the vote, that on election day, you got all your supporters to the polls and made sure that everybody voted. That no longer pertains. Now, it's a month ahead of time. This Monday is when, when uh, mail-in ballots uh, go out, so voting actually will start this Monday, and that's when the campaigns are going to be very heavy, get out the vote, for the next 30 days. Well, there is a lot at stake, and I, I, think, I think we can all hope that people will vote because I think there's probably some, some uh, election fatigue, if you will, in San Diego with all these elections, but this is a hugely important election for the future of the city, is it not? It's an absolutely. Keep in mind, because it's a special election, it'll be the bulk of Bob Filner's you know, uh, leftover term, so that's almost a full term, and then, of course, that person will probably run for re-election. So it's Everything's on the line on this one, especially since you have two candidates who absolutely have a two completely different philosophical views, which I think is good for the constituents. They, they have a very clear choice, and they're both very decent people, unlike what we saw in the last election. So they have a very good choice, I think, for the citizens of San Diego. Political analyst John Yadian, thank you for joining us this morning. Looking sharp with your bullet tie. Thank there, you very much. Representing. <laughs>